Jesus Christ lived in Palestine. So let's keep humanity and free Palestine. Where there was loads of sexual immorality, there was loads of drunkenness, orgies, there was all sorts going on in that place. We're gonna dance. We can preach and we can preach and we can preach, right? This is the deal. I believe that I'm gay from some type of bank where I've been to it. As much as time moved on, quite a lot of Christianity still has in that aspect. Yeah, 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 so sure. Like, I believe at the moment, I would say I'm a Christian, but I would say I've got a relationship with God. That's what yeah. I mean. So, I mean, I, I totally understand that, like, there's a stigma between Christianity and those who are homosexual. Yeah. Now, but I've committed myself here to tell the truth and tell it in love yeah. and what the Bible actually says. The lie, the lie we get thrown at me is an abomination from man to life is void. That's yeah. all about pedophilia, not homosexuality. Yeah, I, I've studied that as well. Now, to be fair, I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, sorry, have you survived? When you this uh, there should be one of those little ones, man. That one, the square one. So what I'm going to say to you, mate, is this. I can't find the Bible where it says it's okay for a man to be homosexual. Yeah. However, it also says it's not okay for sex yeah. It also says that it's not okay to look a lot for someone. See, the standard is so high. Yeah, yeah. See, what the Bible, what most people want to tell you, tell you is that it says to not just love Jesus and that be it. There's actually two trilogies, but we deny ourselves. Now, I totally get that people say I was born again. Absolutely, I totally get it. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah. The Bible also says we must be born again. Now, what that means is all of us are born into sin, and that manifests itself looking like something different from everybody else. However, the Bible says we must be born again. So what that looks like means is that we are born into sin. That means we have a rebellious spirit. But it also says we must be born again. So when Jesus is our Lord, his spirit and dwells you as a born again Christian. And he gets to work on that. It doesn't say to the woman who is caught in adultery, that's why he gets to be So it's born sin. So if it's a man who struggles with homosexuality, it's great love is Jesus. If it's a person who wants to go and sleep with every single woman he sees and needs to be that, it's great the Lord should be Jesus. This is the thing. If God said to sin, it doesn't matter how we feel about it. A lot of people use the whole thing, uh, I know you might have done as well, but again, I think they've put me attitude now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole pedophilia thing. But there's enough in the Bible that says actually, God is against homosexuality. But, do you have to ask him that? Is it because it's just a big spell for the hit? No. So I, when I, like, I literally just drop this camera in. I dropped it, I'm upset about it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to the manufacturer because they're going to fix it. When we're broken, where do we go? Our manufacturer. Um, the gospel is this, all of us, although we think we're good, we're not really that good. Um, and the reason we know we're not good is because you're good, you said you're good, and you walked away because she's desperate for chicken wings. She's desperate for chicken wings, but she's not desperate for everlasting life. The Bible says their gods are their bellies. It means actually you know what it is, Leeds? We just do what our body tells us to do. We're just a slave to all of our impulses and emotions. You can't tell your stomach not to grumble when it's hungry, can you? And just like that, when you get an urge to do something, right or wrong, most people just do it. You battle it a little bit sometimes, but actually for the most part, you just do it. I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling all of you. When we look to the word of God here tonight, Leeds, now you guys can pretend that you don't hear this. You can pretend that you don't see this, but I know you do. And the reason I can say that because back in the day, there's nothing that I wanted anything less than to hear a preacher, especially when I'm trying to have a night out in the town, right? Who wants that? And the issue isn't, do you want it? It's, do you need it? Is it needed? Is the gospel needed here today? Well, what the gospel is, is good news. Does Leeds need good news in 2024? The answer is, yeah, of course it does, sister. Of course it does. 
So we know that we need good news. The gospel is also telling us of a problem with humanity. Sir, does humanity have a problem? No. Humanity is perfectly well. All is well in humanity. Well, your sign tells me different because your sign says, please, I am hungry. In the beginning, when God made things good, we were without need. We were without need. It was all good. And do you know why it was all good? Because God is our Father. He gave us a garden. He gave us dominion. He gave us rules and boundaries because that's what a loving Father does. But after that, do you know what happened? Sin entered the world. The devil came along and he said, why is, is God really like that? The first question in the Bible comes from Satan. And he says, is God really like that? And I've been in Leeds all day, and I've so many people saying that. Is God really like that? If that's the case, why? How? All that sort of question. You might even have those questions tonight, mate. Is God really like that? And what we did is, humanity, we believed him. It didn't take much. We believed the lies of a serpent over our Heavenly Father. Now we get to here tonight in Leeds. Why is there pain, suffering, hunger, sickness, death? Because we've sinned. We've fallen short. What is sin? It's a moral breaking of God's law. So God's heart for you tonight, all of you who hear the gospel, is that you would repent. That you would stop going down this road to destruction. Now that road down there paints a, a, a picture very, very well. If you just look down this street, there's nightclub after nightclub, there's pride colours everywhere. Now I was today thinking about pride, right? With it being June, the world celebrates a particular type of pride. But any pride, any pride at all, biblically, is an affront to God. People say, what's wrong with being prideful? Brother, do you think being prideful is positive or negative? God bless you, mate. Take care. It's both. It's positive and negative. Well, the Bible tells us in the Proverbs, God bless you, mate. The Bible tells us in the Proverbs, where pride is, nothing but strife, conflict, follows. You might know this one. Another proverb says this, says pride comes before a fall. The scripture actually says pride comes before destruction, right? Now when I was just talking about the garden, the, um, the garden of Eden and the fall of man, Satan's pride came before the fall. Satan's pride led to conflict between man and God, right? Because pride is an anti-God thing. No matter what wrapping paper it has, if it's the rainbow, if it's just macho bravado, whatever it is, whatever pride does, it's anti-God, right? And pride makes God who we want him to be. Do you know that the Bible says that God is love? God is love. All love, all goodness, all truth, all mercy, all patience, all that love is, is God. God is that. He is the source. But when we look to pride in June, it says love is love. We take God out of the picture. Now, any time we take God out of the picture, what follows? Strife, destruction, a fall. Who was the author of that in the garden? Lucifer. Now, a lot of people don't like hearing that, but it's very, very true. Yeah? Well, I'm talking about this. Do you know why animal cruelty exists? Because people allow it. And what, what, why would somebody be cruel to an animal? I'm a Christian and I'm a vegan. Christian and a vegan. So you would know that sin does that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Sin is cruel to animals. And we're here today to tell you about it, but also tell you the good news that there is, as you know, as a Christian who's a vegan. So, I know what, I'm going to get down here and talk to this. And I was thinking about this. In a very sensitive world that flies many flags for all sorts of things, I was wondering how on earth would I describe pride for what it is to lead? So I ask you the question, how do we spell pride? P-R-I-D-E. Pride is all about I. I. 
And that is the problem, that we put ourselves in the center. It's all about I. And when we look to Isaiah 14, people argue if it's about King Nebuchadnezzar or if it's about Satan himself. But what we see here is pride in action. Five times King Nebuchadnezzar or Satan says, I will lift myself up high. I will establish my throne in the heavens. I will lift myself up. I will exalt myself to the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Now this is why there's a problem with pride. This king decided to build a 90 foot statue, golden statue, 90 foot high and 9 foot wide sir. And he said, whatever you're doing, stop, bow down and worship my image. Bow down. And, and if you don't, it's a fiery furnace for you. That's what pride does. See, pride doesn't just say, me, 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 I, I, I. It also says, you, you, you. You must bow down. You must worship me. You must worship my emotions. You must worship my image. You must worship as I tell you to worship. Yeah, go for it, brother. You must do that. This is what pride does. Amen. We need him. Yeah, what do you believe about him? Not salvation army, salvation in Christ alone. But what I'm saying to you guys here is, right, if you would, let's get serious, honest. We can preach and we can preach and we can preach, right? This is the deal. We live in a world that is obsessed with our own feelings. We live in a world that is ex obsessed with ourselves. We live in a world where everybody has to bow down and worship us. And do you know what the source of that is? It's pride, guys. It's pride. And if you look around all around, see how we have a flag waving all about it. And God opposes the proud. The Bible says God opposes the proud. Now, when we look to Nebuchadnezzar, as I was saying before, let me say a crystal clear for you guys, right? When we look at King Nebuchadnezzar, this guy was a king in Babylon. And what Babylon was like, guys, it was a place where there was loads of sexual immorality, there was loads of drunkenness, orgies, there was all sorts going on in that place. And he said you could not worship anything apart from him. And people were sick, right? And do you know what people were sick with in Babylon? Sin. They were sick with sin. They were slaves to their desires, right? Whatever their flesh told them to do, that's what they did. And hey, I can completely relate to that because I used to do that. I used to do that. Now, most people just did do that. They bowed down and worship because they just want an easy life. But the Christians of the time said, I'm not going to do that. So if you're going to chuck me into the fiery furnace, let it be so. Because I serve a God who can save me. But even if he doesn't, I'm going to be with him anyway. Now, we know the story. We know that there was a man like the Son of God, Jesus, in the furnace with them. But what I'm saying to you guys is this. You look to King Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted people to bow down to his image, to his emotions, to do things his way. Does that sound familiar to the time that we live in now? And do you know what that's all about? Pride. So if Isaiah 14 is about him, it's prideful. If it's about Satan in, in the beginning, it's prideful. Now, why do we speak about this? Why do we come out to a street that's clearly very much for that? Because God hates pride. God hates it. And do you know why God hates pride? I'll tell you. Because God loves you. That's why. God hates your arrogance and your pride because pride does not come to the cross. It does not come to Jesus. It says, I need no saviour. I am God. I will be like the Most High. I will ascend up. I, I, I. This is what it says. So people will laugh and they will mock, but it's all from a prideful, rebellious heart. To say you say nonsense, but you testify that what I'm saying is true. But Jesus literally says, love God, love your neighbour as yourself. Do we live in a world where that happens? No. We love ourselves. 
We love ourselves in such a way that if you disagree with us, you're being hateful. We live in a world where this, this, bringing somebody to the message of truth is deemed hateful, but agreeing and affirming somebody in a lifestyle that it destroys them, it seems good. Now, guys, we love you in such a way that we come out here and we tell you. We buy amplification and steps and signs and we, we put ourselves out here to say, you know what it is, no matter who you are, no matter what life's look like, no matter what the world has said to you, no matter what you've bowed down and worshipped before, Jesus Christ calls you to himself. The message does not exclude the homosexual, the transgender, someone who's in all sorts, it does not exclude that. But quite often, different communities like to exclude themselves. That is not the case. The message of the gospel goes out to all people. See, when we look to Isaiah 14, and in the garden, what we see is Satan, Lucifer, the author of pride, saying, my will, my way, me, 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 I, I, I. When we look to the world here today, what we see is me, 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 I, 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 pride, pride, pride. But when we look to Jesus, the one who is righteously, beautifully, glorious, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, what do we see? Humility. Humility. The one who has every reason to boast is the one who humbled himself to come down here to rescue the prideful sinner but unhumbled himself to the point of death humility oh my lord what a savior we have and to a world who just opposes him the bible says that god opposes the proud but he gives grace to the humble Isaiah 14 says, after all of the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar or Satan, but you will fall. You will fall. And leads we come here today to say, if we walk in pride, if we walk in our own way, if we continue to puff ourselves up and stick our fingers up at the Holy God, you will fall. And you're going to fall all the way to hell. She says, good. And you know what Jesus says to that? Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. Jesus bled and died for sinners. He really did, mate. For sinners who today would mock him. The word says this, mate, that whilst we were still sinners, Jesus Christ bled and died for you. Jesus Christ lived in Palestine. So let's keep humanity and free Palestine. No, you know what we need? If it's whatever flag you're waving, if it's an uh, Israeli one, if it's a Palestinian one, you know the flag that we need to wave? The white flag, the flag of surrender that says, Father, I'm a sinner, not just them, I'm a sinner and I need a saviour. And Jesus Christ is that saviour. He's the way, the truth and the life. Now, really, what we need? We need to unite in love with all religion needs to unite So what I would say to you, with Jesus, uh, sister, with Muhammad, with is, everyone, no, that can't happen. There's not going to be unite unity with Muhammad and Buddha and Gandhi and Dawkins. You know why? Because Jesus says, don't think I've come to bring peace. I've come with a sword. Now, he's not rich in talking about war here, but what he's talking about is spiritually that you cannot put light and darkness together. That Jesus comes to save his people. There's people from every tribe and every I tongue. Agree. So I am not flying a flag. I preach a gospel for Christ. That's God bless your sister. Yeah, and that's what we should do, yeah? I'm a Roman Catholic. You're Roman Catholic? Are you born again? So if I was to ask you right now, tonight, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. We are going to die. But what if tonight I was going to die? What would you say to me? What have I got to do to be saved? You need to be good. You need to be in peace. You I haven't got to time be to be good. I'm going to die. What have I got to do? You have time always to be good in peace with your heart. So I've got to be soul. good. Peace in your, in your soul. In peace in yeah. your soul. Can I tell you what the Bible says? The Bible says nobody's good, not one. And the only way that we can be made righteous is through the blood of Jesus Christ when he did the cross. Now we can walk into that righteousness by faith in Christ alone. See, you know as well as I do that the wars and the rumors of wars and the death and the suffering is because humanity is desperately sick. Yeah? And there's no amount of good works that anybody can work away that sin. It's sick because it lives without, 
without what Jesus told they us. They had to leave Christ. For what you're saying is you that can keep the law. Amazing. It says nobody can keep the law. There is no religion, there is no community, there is no, there is no soul in this, in this society. But Jesus says, sister, that we must be born again in John 3. Now that means we were born into sin, in the flesh. Now we need to be born of the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Can I just say to you that Christ isn't looking for your good works on that day when you stand before him. What he's looking for is the robe of righteousness on your shoulders. So I would say to you today, believe in Jesus and you shall be saved. I do. Okay, good. Nobody can work their way into heaven. That's a beautiful song, mate. But I would rather have this said to you that nobody can work their way into heaven. You cannot be good enough. If you are proud, you stand as Lucifer. If you humble yourself, wave the white flag, you stand with Christ. Because what Christ did for you, mate, was he gave his life for you so that you could be washed clean. That your sins could be forgiven. When I look to you guys, out of great love, I say, look, this world might say, I'll do what I want to do. My English is no good. That's a question there, mate. It says, what is your relationship status with God? What's your relationship status with God? Yeah, give us all, I'll give you one. Okay. If you, yeah, if you, yeah. I give it here and there. I can give you another one. Now, in 2024, we see many people, like I said to the lady here before, waving many flags. There's only one flag that's going to save you. That's the white flag that says, I surrender to my Lord and to my Saviour, Jesus Christ. Because the truth of the matter is this, that he came, he died, he rose again, and he's coming back to judge the living and the dead. So what will you say, sir? Will you say I was good? Will you say I just didn't really hear about you? Because I tell you this, there's going to be no excuse on that day. What will you say to your maker when you meet him? You're going to dance. There's going to be no dancing. But I tell you, who will be dancing and rejoicing? Those who are in Christ. Because there's going to be two things. There's going to be people who say, he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Into the lake of fire, you work with iniquity. All of your sin, your blasphemy, your mockery and your pride. Or, there'll be those who says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter rest. In a word, looking for peace, rest, joy and hope. You cannot find it devoid of Jesus Christ. In a world looking for identity and love, you cannot find it outside of Jesus Christ. In a world looking for truth, he is the truth, right? Not your truth. Not the world's truth. Not religion's truth. He is the truth. The way and the light. So if all of that preaching done, we're here to speak to you, we're here to pray for you, we're here to answer the questions that you would not take to the vicar. Let's do that.